Well, shalom, my bride. How are you doing today? I've got uh, no sticky pads that I could find, so I've got this here. And what this is, ladies and gentlemen, is a reminder that my queen has requested that we have prayer at the beginning of these videos. Because why? Because she likes it, and so do I. In fact, earlier this evening, Ah, I had really screwed up on minutes, I'm telling you. <laughs> and I hate the phone, but I love her so much that I'm, I'm dedicating myself to get on that phone. And I've had a phobia for so many years, man, I've had this phobia. To put that thing next to my head or talk on it, it, it you know, and when my, my brother David heard, he says, You called her, what, two times in two days? He said, This must be love. You called me two times in a year and only gave me two minutes each time, you know? So, I mean, everybody that knows me knows I detest the phone. But for this woman, and uh, tonight, I mean, <laughs> it was like Friday evening that, uh, oh man, we went through, I forget how many minutes, but it was a couple hours. I thought it was like five minutes, and I'm like, no, we got six minutes left. No, it was Thursday, I think, or something. But I finally did get some minutes, and uh, to celebrate, because we've only had been, I've, she's been keeping the phone off, you know, and I'm calling, and I'm, I'm saying a real quick prayer so that she can get it in the message, and, you know, that kind of was pretty bad, because I, I like to hear her voice. She hears mine all the time, so I went ahead and, uh, uh, called her this evening and her and I we took us our first flying lesson I really think because I mean the time before man I mean we were about ready to get pretty high there you know but and yeah I was just so weighed down with uh, joy and tears you know from the first prayer real prayer I'm not talking about uh, when we went before the courts of heaven for our betrothal and our marriage but uh, this was totally different I mean after that we had prayed, but here uh, last night when we got together again, or not last night, tonight. <laughs> well, I guess you could say last night because it's past 12, but it's still tonight in the uh, Hebrew calendar. And man, we prayed and it was like, went right straight to the courts of heaven. She even prayed that uh, I have dreams of heaven. You know, I never did before, and I might, I might, I might have. Uh, I never did because I never seen the rewards. I never. <laughs> I keep a lie. I lose my tooth. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, everything I did with the law. You know, I got beat, man. I'm telling you. You know, I got to keep the law. Whack! Oh, got to keep the law. Boof! You know and. My bride, man, she was so blessed. And then she starts keeping the laws and everything works out perfect. But here are what I want to do in these uh, videos. And then I'm going to pray, okay? And uh, ask our king to guide us. And everybody, I hope, will be in agreement. I mean, that's the most beautiful thing. When you can pray with someone in agreement. And, you know, my queen was asking why I didn't pray in these videos. You know, especially at the... I mean, I started praying recently I started praying and I've been wanting to pray every video every video and I put it on and I kind of freeze for a second and say yeah she would take over you know and for some reason I forget the prayers and just get on with different things and then sometimes we we'll remember the prayers and we'll will stop but I, I didn't used to pray much at all in any of my videos because I had nobody to agree with me you know and and I didn't want to put my prayers out there for people not to agree with and you know so I wouldn't be heard and things of that sort but uh, as long as my bride who these videos are intended for is in agreement with the prayers that we both give then uh, you know we we're boundless man I mean there's nothing you know, if one guy can just, you know, say to a mountain to be moved, then it's moved. Well, what about someone that's in agreement? Oh, 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 oh. and you're going to see what these videos are coming up here next are because our king, you know, has a great desire for my bride to be made whole. See, she's been uh, suffering tribulations through the years, and she's had some, you know, medical problems. I'm not going to discuss it here. I'm sure she'll... You know, she's pretty well documented. 
and our king's going to heal her and I just got to show her you know that and she doesn't feel like she's worthy sometimes you know and doesn't have the faith it's like ah, I mean I've healed hundreds of people in my past if I didn't heal thousands and then they all got sick again you know afterwards so I quit laying hands on it and uh, I'm going to be uh, fully honest with you. I'm going to pull aprons from my side, you know. I'm going to find me some uh, some cloth, and I'm going to pray on it. And uh, get some olive oil I'll put on there. And then uh, what my bride is going to do, there are certain requirements that she's going to have to take. Uh, and she's going to have to eat sauerkraut. <laughs> she's going to love it, you know. But she's going to have to do that for a little bit. And uh, we're going to get her colon cleansed. Uh, she's going to be perfected. She's going to be cleansed. And then after that, she's going to be all set because she wants to get baptized. Isn't that wonderful, folk? You know, she understands, you know. And, you know, it's a baptism that's going to bring the uh, blood of the Lamb on her. Tonight we explained in the prayers, you know, that my bride, with her desire to keep these laws, has certainly pleased our Father enough that he gave her to his son to give to me, you know, and that's just beautiful, so because of that I know that the father gave my bride to the son, and now that, you know, she got there through the schoolmaster, the laws and commandments, and now is in the king's hands, okay, she belongs to the king, now she's going to get faith, and you're going to see the faith, okay? It'll most likely be documented, you know, for anyone would like to see, but they're not going to see her name or anything like that. She's my bride, okay? And right now, the way things are, she's protected, uh, and we're going to keep her that way. So we're going to bring out uh, here in Matithia chapter 14 when we return from this prayer. So... Uh, if you're not in agreement with the prayers, you know, that's, that's fine. Just, uh, you know, don't listen or something. Fast forward, you know, because <laughs> these prayers are powerful. And, uh, and you're going to see that the words from our mouths, from my mouth and my bride's mouth, are, they're going to move mountains. <laughs> She's going to be healed. So, uh, my love, if you would like, you could put this on pause, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, that way you can give a prayer, and then you can put me back on, and I'll finish it back off. If if you'd like to do that, that would be fine. You know, don't forget your headscarf, babe. All right, uh, so go ahead and click her off, and get ready to click her on. I love you, babe. Father Yahweh. Through Yahshua, your great son, we do praise you. We thank you for all things. We ask that you will open up our minds to the wisdom and the knowledge that are found within the words of your laws and your commandments. Within the every word, like it says in Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4, and it says, Man cannot live by the Messiah alone. Yes, that's what it says. Man cannot live by the Messiah alone, but they must live by every word that proceeds the mouth of our Father. And I know, Yahshua, that it's been a real tough time, you know, and I do apologize for quitting the healing ministry back in those days, but I didn't even know what sin was. And just as I quit cursing, because I saw what a curse brought upon a man and his wife the next day, and it almost killed him. It was the most horrible thing I ever pronounced from my mouth, and I pray that it not be there again. Let there not be curses and blessings. So I've repented those curses, our king, you know, and I do pray that you will hear my prayers. Hear the prayers of my bride here. I'm in total agreement with this wonderful woman that you gave to me. She's a marvelous gift. And you gave her to me in the shape she's in because you know that I would see her as perfect. But of course the world would look at her and see her as damaged goods. Well, you know, I know this is for your work too. I know it. I see it. There's no reason why my bride had to suffer and go through the torments of the things that she had suffered in the past. And those bone chips and everything, I know that they're going to dissolve into little pieces of calcium and just 
float away. <laughs> Maybe heal other bones. I don't know what your plan is for this, but I do know that she's going to have a full recovery because she's going to have a clean holy temple. She's going to be baptized because she wants to be baptized and and probably, you know, looking daggers at me because I've kind of like said you got to slow down a little bit because we're going to we're going to do this all right and proper, and because she has the desire of Yahshua, if the world, you know, seems to open up and swallow us up tonight, we know that this woman will have salvation because of the desire that she had for this baptism. And I do pray that by the laying on of hands here, that she will acquire Holy Spirit and that her body, even at the same time, will be totally healed that she may come forth from that watery grave as a brand new person. <laughs> a daughter of Father Yahweh and a sister to our King. Oh, I pray, our King, that you'll accept my praise and honor that I give, and the worship of that temple that you gave me, and I pray that you'll hear the same in the way that she conducts herself toward me. She wants to kiss your feet, you know, and fall into your arms, so I pray you keep her on the straight and narrow because I'd hate to see that goal be messed with it all but I pray that you'll open her heart open her mind give her this faith that you promised that she would get in the scriptures where it said once she was given to you she'd find this faith and I and she thinks that she doesn't have it but she's the most faithful woman I've ever seen and I've never seen faith this great in any of those that I had healed in the past and it wasn't me that heals Yahshua, you know that. And, you know, I do pray that you will heal my better half. I know I'm uh, prone here to suffer through my days so that I know that the healing comes from you. And it doesn't come from me. Paul had the same things, you know, and, and he gladly did his work as I do. But I do pray also that uh, you hear our cry out for justice and judgment on this earth, as Enoch said that we should, and I do, Yahshua. I pray that your justice and your judgment come here and set these prisoners free. And it may very well be once this investigation is conducted and they find out the corruptibility of the authorities that were set in authority over the people of the land of Texas and such, and they find out what they did with these people, I pray, Yahshua, that you yank open those doors through this investigation and you let the innocent ones free. I do pray this, you know, Father Yahweh, in your righteous son's name. I know I don't have to, you know, there's no way I can get to you, Father, but I do pray, Yahshua, and I know you don't have to tell the Father either. You don't have to tell him anything because everything's given to you, but I... I do pray that you just kind of look over there and say, Hey, Father, you know, uh, Ellie and I sure does thank you for that bride and for the healing that you're going to provide. There's no doubt in my mind that she's going to be healed because you don't want me to have a damaged package like that, a wonderful gift that's just wrapped perfectly up with righteousness. And, and she's got the hedge around her. She's got the protection, but she's hurting. And I just pray that you take away her pain and, and that you heal her. I mean, it's it's my my gift, you know. Why do you want to give me a broken gift that hurts? I, I can't handle that. So I do pray that you love me and show it on my bride and love her and, and show the love toward her and the healing so that I may have joy as well. And with that, Father Yahweh, I praise you and Yahshua. You're always in our hearts. I don't close my prayers out that we may pray all day long, but we do take these times before your throne, a special before you, and, and put in special petitions, but all the day long we are a living sacrifice for you before the throne. And we thank you for all things. Okay, thank you very much, my lovely bride. I, I hope that you went to heaven a little bit there, too. That, that I kind of felt it. I... I've never been there. I've never had a vision of it. I've never dreamed. I, the only thing I know about heaven is there's no suffering and no more pain and no more sorrow. And that's all I've known. But anyway, my love, you've got more faith than anyone. And there's others out there that's got this faith as well. But I'll, I'll hopefully be able to 
build the faith of anyone that's going to listen to this and and if you get your faith built you know there shouldn't be any reason why you don't repent and I'm not talking to my bride here my bride's already done all this she's she's in Yahshua's hand she's done the qualifications of the law even though she may not know them all the desire that she has had for them you know is well enough that uh, our king gave her to me and you know why you know why our king gave her to me the same reason the father gave her to the son <laughs> because she could honor the father and you know I waited on our king and, and he gave me someone just like the father did to him, you know, it's his example, you know, and and our king gave me someone that, that will honor me, because she honors the father, she knows how, and it, it's beautiful, people, if you could just put your minds in these things, I mean, put your minds in the mind frame of these disciples, and, and people that repent, <laughs> there's 144,000 of us there, and, and my bride just joined into the family. <coughs> Matthew 14:22 Immediately Yahshua made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he set the multitudes or sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on a mountain by himself to pray. Okay, so our king, you know, there's times that he had to pray alone. He you know, I mean, even his disciples, if you read the scriptures, none of them believed, you know, they know, not one of them understood. He kept asking them, can you not under, can you not see, can you not hear, you know, even uh, rebuke Kepha, you know, get the hunt, Satan, <laughs> you know. And it was told that they didn't have these things. They didn't have Holy Spirit, and they never understood everything fully. A couple things they had some understanding, and I understand how that works, because I've had that, and then boom, it turned into mountains of knowledge. It's like, wow! But they understood some of the things about our king, and uh, they knew very little. But after Holy Spirit come, when they went to Pentecost, I mean, it, they all fell away. <laughs> I mean, even Kepha denied our king three times, and our king reminded him <laughs> three times, hey, do you love me, Kepha? Do you love me, Kepha? Kepha, do you love me? <laughs> yes, yes, you know I do. You know, but uh, that was the, what that was for, okay? He denied our king three times. Our king asked him three times, do you love me? He gave him repentance of every time he denied him. And that was beautiful if you look at it that way. And these disciples, man, they was like those out in the wilderness. None of them had Holy Spirit. Not when the king was walking, and none of them had Holy Spirit when Moshe was there, except for like Aaron and the, you know, the priest or whatever. And, you know, they had Holy uh, Spirit poured out on their head in an oil. <laughs> and it came from obedience, okay? So, you know, that's what it was. Uh, the prophets were told to pour the oil on someone's head, they would get Holy Spirit. The same way it says, you know, if you're ill or sick or whatever, go to the elders and they will lay hands on you well what if that elders an adulterer and the other one's an axe murderer you know on the side and you go there and you get hands laid on you you know well if you got faith you should be healed it doesn't matter it doesn't say what those elders say or do or believe okay there's healing there but I don't suggest anybody go out there unless you're actually keeping the laws and the commandments I would never ever I, I, I stopped I said I would never do this again until it was time and I believe it's time I was given my bride I see this you know and it came from our king it was a reward to me <laughs> she is so beautiful I, I and I must have prayed for her to be like that because she is so lusterious. In fact, you know, I was she had sent me this photograph and and we were talking there before the prayer and I told her, I says, Wow, hon, I says, Honey, man, I says, you are so beautiful. I says, Did you know that you are just as beautiful upside down? <laughs> and little, I found out with them little round arrows was in the picture, you hit it and it laid yeah. You know, and she looked great right upside down, you know, and, and she thought it was pretty great that I was getting some humor back, so 
Anyway, here we are in Matthias 1423. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up in the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. So, you know, he's been up there a while on the mountain praying. And I prayed a long time by myself. And it's... I don't find fun in it. You know, it's... It's, it's empty. <laughs> I was empty. <laughs> I was empty, I really was, and now I'm starting to run on full, and people, I'm going to tell you what, you know, the things that you hear me say right now, oh, they're going to be multiplied greatly here before too long. I've been being shown some things that will amaze the Pope. Yeah, he won't even hear it because he's so blind, but that's all right, you know, he's got his portion as I got my portion. He's got his work, I've got my work. Only the only difference is my work's going to succeed because it's not of me. It's of our king. The same way Yachanan's immersion, you know, his baptisms were from heaven. They weren't of man, they were of heaven. And the works that I'm doing here, and you're going to see, my bride's going to be perfectly healed. I don't even think she's going to have scars, <laughs> you know. I believe our king's going to make her perfect for me. He loves me. He honored me, you know, and... And he gave her to me to make, and she told me she was in pain. And it's like, oh no, Yashua, you can't do this, man. You know, you give me this beautiful gift, perfect in shape and form, intelligence, and, and she's in pain. Okay, I know what you want to do. So I told her right away, you know, I believe this is the first one that's going to be done in these last days. And, and it may be a while before I heal anybody else because I won't lay my hands on anybody to, to heal them unless they're totally dedicated to these laws and commandments because I've hurt them before when they weren't. <laughs> and it tore me up enough that it made me quit my preaching and everything else, you know, but I was a lying preacher too, you know, so I was a mess, man, you know, but it's different here, it's different. We're operating on the faith of my bride, it has nothing to do with me, okay, except that I'm going to pray, you know, our king knows me, you know, and these hands, they do heal, and I don't touch many people with them, okay, and when I do, I make sure they're like turned off, because I don't you know, everybody notices that I've got a real deep heat and things of that sort that do come from them, but that's that's just a frequency in my body. There was a time they took a picture of my aura, and they actually took three of them, I think it was. And when the lady, you know, three different times, and when the lady opened them up, you know, and she was supposed to tell me what it is, because I'm colorblind. You know, partially, and I couldn't tell, but everything in there was like these bright purples and brilliant whites, and uh, a little bit of some other, but it was like brilliant, and it was way out around me, and she looked at him, and she said, you take these and get out of here. She says, I don't even want to talk to you. I said, well, what? What did I do? I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk... You know, so then somebody else had looked at those and said, wow, I've never seen such brilliant righteousness shown in a camera before. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, these colors, man. He said, they're all colors of royalty and, and the righteousness, you know, and your aura is powerful, you know. But that's the way I was made. And, you know, it's my faith. I've been healed, okay. I've been healed of colon cancer. And there's no problem for my wife, you know. I mean, I didn't have the faith she... Well, maybe I did. I was very zealous. I, I really was in those days. And that's why, you know, all the marital problems came. Because my, you know, other half there didn't want to keep the laws or commandments. And she wouldn't go to heaven with me like my new bride has. In fact, I, I don't even consider my old bride as being one. She never was. This year is my first love I have, and she's going to be healed. Our king promised me this. But it's on her, you know, and she's going to be so strong, man. I'm telling you, she's going to be leaping for joy and trying to squeeze through that phone because, dear, I'm, I'm not going to make a video for you to get baptized or be healed with because somebody else might use it. Uh, I'm going to call you when the time is right, uh, once you get the mailing and everything, but I want to... Uh, uh, do some fasting before I 
pray over these claws to send them. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's nothing to do with me. It's just, uh, I'm showing our king that I have this great desire for you to no longer be in pain, you know, and he's going to heal you. He, he's showing all these things for us so that you can see it. Okay, and then he was, evening came, he was all alone, verse 24, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Contrary, it was going everywhere, you know, it wasn't in one direction, it was contrary. Okay. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Yahshua went to them walking on the sea. Oh, and for my, uh, 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 let's just go on. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Yahshua went to them. He's out there walking on top of the water. And, you know, for a lot of people, that seems like a big feat. Yeah, I've done it uh, a couple times. Might have done it a few, but I've done it a couple times. I've actually walked, well, ran. <laughs> I climbed up out of water once because of the leeches and stuff that was in there. I was so scared. I I pushed my, and I'm not talking to have an ice on the lake either. This was uh, my, I was in a boat with a guy I used to call an uncle that I, uh, that I really don't anymore, but uh, I was up in the front of the boat going, Onward, Christian soldiers! And he rocked the boat. And I went into the Erie Canal and nasty water, man. I mean, we never ate anything out of there once we fed a fish out of there, and it had sores all over its mouth the next day, and it lasted for weeks. So when I hit the water, man, it was like leeches and snapping turtles and snakes, and I pushed myself up out of the water, and I ran across it to the dock, and ran up the bank, and the fellow that uh, one time I used to call an uncle, he, he sat there for hours in that boat. He, he couldn't move. He just... And he told the adults, you know, and they all looked at me kind of funny, you know, but the story didn't go around much. They didn't want that kind of stuff to be told, but that actually occurred there. And another time I ran across Clear Creek and uh, uh, oh, where is Colorado, Clear Creek in Colorado, up by uh, Boulder, up in that area. And a mountain lion came out of a cave that I was in. <laughs> and didn't want me to be around the cub, and I, I came out that sucker, and I ran right straight across the across the creek there, it's kind of wide, you know, but I ran right across it, and that mountain lion stopped and just <laughs> looked. <laughs> People are going, what? <laughs> it was uh, pretty funny, you know, but I don't count that as what, you know, Yahshua did. He didn't have to use all them emotions, I guess, you know, to, to do this sort of thing. He had power over the elements. He walked through walls. <laughs> and we're going to do that too, dear. We're going to walk through walls. There's times that people won't even know, and, and we won't be there anymore. And the doors will be locked and everything, and and these things are coming. These, uh, everything our king said that he had done is going to be done, and even greater. And he made me fast for 44 days for some kind of reason, and I think it was kind of like in preparation for this bride of mine to, to see if I was worthy of her. And for some reason, you know, he, he finally figured, hey, after 59 years of kicking Al's ass, well, why don't we bless him with his better half? Well, won't that be great? Let's see what the boy does then, you know? And it's like, you know, and I, I, I was rejecting it. It took her to tell me that she was a gift from our king. <laughs> that she was created for me. And I'm like, no, no, you ain't, no. But I had to ask her that secret question, the password question, you know. And and then shortly after that, we did get married. But I asked her, you know, I said, uh, so do you uh, do you like the chop wood, honey? <laughs> you know, I love to chop wood. She says, boy, she says, I like to chop like a, a, a cord and a half or two cord a day, depending on what kind of wood. But boy, I like to get the juices. I'm like, oh, no, she is the one, you know. It's... That's the password code, you know, with the king. If if she answered with any kind of enthusiasm about chopping wood, that was the woman, you know. And I could have used any question, I'm sure. <laughs> but 
but that's just how it came out. And she let me know that she was it, and she is it, and that's why she's going to be healed. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Yahshua went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, the hell's that out there? I don't know, man. They're one of them unicorn whales, man. I don't know. I can't see. I just asked you, what's that out there? And then they saw him walking on the sea. And they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost, man, it's a ghost! And they cried out for fear, ah! Like little girls, man, they're all freaking out on the boat, and they can only run so far, or else they fall in to where he's walking. They're in a hell of a predicament, man. Ain't never, ain't never seen nothing like that before. Ain't never gonna see nothing like that one again with all these disciples screaming like little girls. And I bet our king was chuckling, man. You know, <laughs> look at them girls, man. He rebuked them because they were scared, you know, because the, the the waves and stuff was trying to sink the ship. So they thought they didn't realize the king was sleeping there. How in the world is is the ship gonna fall in the water, man? <laughs> He's walking. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, I get a kick out of these scriptures. My king, man, he is so cool. He is just far out. Whoops my ass, I love him, but man, he does some amazing stuff. He's walking on the sea here. They were troubled, saying it's a ghost, you know, and they cried out in fear, you know. Now, now here's a little clue. If, if Holy Ghost was a proper thing to call on, well, why are they afraid of a ghost? Ain't they holy? Nah, ghosts are demons. That's what they're saying there, is they thought it was a ghost. And, and when you call on, you know, holy ghost, well, that's what you're calling on. You're calling for the holiest of all the evil demons, I guess, uh, to come to be your ghost. <laughs> but if you call on Holy Spirit, that's uh, what our king does give us. But immediately Yahshua spoke to them, and this is verse 27. Immediately Yahshua spoke to them, after they're screaming like little girls, running around the ship, Oh, it's a ghost, it's a ghost, it's a ghost! You know, and if they urinated themselves, it wouldn't be so bad, because it's probably raining too, you know, so nobody would have noticed. And they were really doing it. But immediately Yahshua spoke to them, saying, Be of great cheer, it is I! Do not be afraid. See, he's, he's settling down these little fellas. They didn't have Holy Spirit yet, see. They, uh, they were simply following him because he told them to do it. And then they seen the miracles and stuff and said, well, this is the right guy to be following, man. You know, I think we ought to make this a profession and a career. And, and we'll kind of do some following to this fellow because of the powers that he set, has. And he said, do not be afraid. So Kepha caught himself a little bit, you know, and he's like, man, you know, more like that didn't matter because it was rain, you know. <laughs> it was rain, it, rain makes us sweat. So it really, he wasn't sweating. He was scared. And then he pulled himself together and Kepha answered him and said, Yahshua, if it is you, command me. See, there's the key right there. You say, ask me. You say, tell me. You say, remind me. He said, command me to come to you on the water. Command me to come to you on the water. See, he put his trust in our king. <laughs> and that's all you got to do, darling. You know, just... I mean, you want to kiss his feet for crying out loud. I think you got trust in him if you married me. <laughs> you know? Hey, look at this. You know, I mean, I'm cute. I am cute. Yes, I am. I'm, And I'm getting cuter all the time. And uh, one of these days we'll get up to where I can say I'm, I'm average. And then, you know, sometime after that, I see, I don't want to make my darling there, you know, a liar. And she thinks that I'm that H word. And I'm going to do whatever I can. But, you know, if I, 
If I just say that I'm the H word now, I would feel like I'm a liar. And I don't want to feel like I'm lying anything. But I, I can say I'm cute. And I can actually believe it right now. And then here in a couple days, I bet I'll be up to average. But I still like cute, you know. I might just keep saying I'm cute and talk her into that because I don't care if I'm ever handsome. If I'm cute and she likes me, oh, that's fine for me. But she wants me that H word, you know, and, and wants me to say it. She, I mean, she's beautiful, man, and she scared me, <laughs> but it's beautiful. And we've got these miracles already in our life, dear. I mean, you pointed out so many of these. If if you're not healed, there's there's got to be a problem with somebody not sitting there in heaven at the time. They must be at the outhouse or something, you know, because, man, the faith you have and the vision you see and, and the detail that you can put things together from the events that take place and come up to make sense of it and that's what we do you know it's like a big old jigsaw puzzle a great big uh oh clue party or something you know where we got that mystery and my bride and i love to do this kind of stuff we like to take a look at why these events took place what occurred after it what did we learn why did we learn it who did we learn it with all that kind of stuff and boom, we can see, you know, and and she really didn't realize she was even telling me that the king had made her for me, you know, and she was a gift, and until she had said it a few times, and she kind of like, wow, I am your gift, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, our king is in lead of these things, and if he's, you know, wanting me to go ahead and and marry you and take you as a gift well certainly he doesn't want me to have junk I mean that's all I've ever had in my life was junk everything but I I had the junk so I could hopefully give it away and everything to people whatever and, and I actually did sometimes there were you know some people I really helped a lot and I never asked a penny and I'm not the kind of guy that gives you something and and every time I see you hey man how did you like that? Did you use it? Or did you like the color? Wasn't it real nice? Oh, I really liked giving it to you, man, but, you know, are you sure you're really enjoying that? Because I gave it to you because, you know, I like you, man, and I want you to have what I gave you. You know, don't you worry about me. I ain't going to think about it, you know, again. You know, and then the next time you see them, it's like trying to hide behind the pretzels or something, you know. They're in Walmart. Oh, hey! Hey, man, did you did you use it? Uh, <laughs> have you polished it? <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, do you want it back? <laughs> you know, but here, you know. and But, you know, and everything I had was taken. But I don't believe my wife's going to be taken from me. She's, she is what my king gave to me. And he gave her to me in the condition she is. Because I never, I prayed that she don't go through tribulation and this and that. And, and then I found out that she did. And it, uh, it, it didn't bother me so much. I understood it. And I understand she's going to suffer only for a couple more uh, weeks maybe okay we're definitely going to have to get this done dear before the seventh new moon okay which is you know I think in September I'll have to check the calendar here and we'll go by it but you know and I could probably just say the word and you'd be healed already but we're not going to do it that way this is something that the world's going to have to see they're going to have to see that there is this hope that the words I'm speaking, there's actually power behind them and authority. And there's going to be people healed. <laughs> but not, not just anybody. No, our king didn't heal just anybody. Our king only healed those who were keeping the commandments and the law. Those that were of the law sheep. Yeah, they were sinning and falling short in it, but they knew they weren't supposed to eat pork and all these other things. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to cleanse my bride's body of these defilements. And she is going to be so pure for baptism. When she comes out of that, it, 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 she might start the wallpaper on fire, man. I don't know, because she's going to shine, man. Let her shine, let her shine, let her shine. But immediately Yahshua spoke, saying, Be of great cheer. It is 
I do not be afraid and Keith answered hit him and said Yahshua if it is you command me to come to you on the water so he said come this is all he said he says command me come <laughs> I mean, you see how difficult healing is? <laughs> That's all it's going to take. You know, all I got to do is pronounce a word. If I, I'm not as great as our Creator. He uttered a couple words and everything was here. <laughs> then he made it all, you know. And But he just uh, uttered a couple words and he put that power in me. Not to, you know, not at this time to do that kind of stuff. I mean, if I had that kind of power and someone was able to piss me off at them, I could look at them and probably ignite something inside of them that would start a chain reaction. I mean, there's people that, uh, you know, auto combust, uh, you know, they're sitting there and then they just burn and the chairs hardly burn or nothing, nothing behind them, wallpaper's fine, you know, they're just, and they find a leg here and an arm there, cooked well done. You know, but uh, these things are are powers that are going to be available for everyone that's going to believe. They're going to have these powers, and if they weren't limited, you could be upset and turn somebody into a nuclear device, and probably phew, this. And I mean, if you've seen, you know, the size of someone's body compared, you know, the way, because it can be spiritually done. Someone can possibly do that. It talks about, you know, the day coming where there will be those that will come up against the saints and uh, their eye sockets, uh, their eyes will consume out of it, their tongues will consume out of their mouths, the flesh and everything is going to fall off their bones. You know, uh, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, uh, horrible things. But that's the power that's going to be granted to the 144,000. And when the king comes, you know, all those that, you know, Father Abraham and such, you know, Noah, all those from the past are all going to be given these powers. But here on the earth right now, you know, we don't, we don't need that kind of power. All I got to do is call on my king and he answers. <laughs> it took 59 years for the best answer I ever had, but... Like I say, if I had to go through it all again, if I knew she was at the end of the rainbow, oh, hell yeah, I, I jump into a damn volcano, man. I mean, swan dive and, and jackknifing and stuff, you know. I'd, I'd be just doing it, saying, baby, look, you know, I'm coming back. And I jump, man, you know, for her. Her righteousness to grow and to develop into what she's going to really be. I mean, I, I, I met her as a princess. Now she's a queen, but, you know, queens grow in wisdom, and she's got that. She's going to be healed here. And you got the king. After Kepha says, command me to come out to you on the water, and Yahshua said, come. And what's Kepha do? Because the Messiah said one word. He said, because, you know, Kepha spoke a whole sentence. And that's kind of how I do stuff. I write a million word love letter to my bride. And she can condense it down to like two sentences. But I couldn't write it in two sentences. It took me a million words, you know. And that's what's going on here with poor Kepha, man. Yahshua, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So Yahshua says... Come. And when Kepha had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Yahshua. I mean, he's out there going, oh, I mean, he's freaking, okay, because the wind's contrary, man. You you got the walk. It's kind of like Forrest Gump movie there when he's in Vietnam. One day it started raining. <laughs> and he come down from the top and from the side and from the bottom. It came from every angle. <laughs> and that's what's going on. Kepha's getting hit with the bills, you know. He's got the electric to come up with. Uh, needs new fishing line. Don't know where he's going to get the shekels, man, you know. And, and he doesn't even know yet that he's going to go out there to the ocean with a fish pole and catch him a fish with a gold coin in its mouth. 
I mean, there's plenty of things our king can do, but he's putting these powers in the hands of the 144,000 in these last days. And I just so occur to be one of the first ones waking up, apparently. Either that or, you know, we're still pretty sparse and... You know, our king's in control of these things, you know. He can go ahead. I mean, there might be 144,000 people out there just like me doing videos. And when I'm out there, our king's in control and the holy malachim to where I never come across the video. I don't know. I've just never heard anyone preach what I preach. They preach parts of it, you know. But they're always off on this or that or the other thing because they're off in these rabbit trails. If you get rid of all the rabbit trails, all the books, the commentaries, and, and everything, just use the Strong's Concordance, okay? And, you know, some of the, you got to realize, even the encyclopedias of men, half the wars and stuff, you know, from the United States were lies. There's things going on that, and reasons for these things. I mean, if you knew what Waterloo was for, it'd be like, wow, man, Rothschild, rah, 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 you banking bastard. You know, banker's going to fall, guys, okay? So you better check your chips in while well, you got your opportunity and repent because, you know, you guys are taking usury, and it's just as bad on those people paying usury. But, you know, my bride and I, we're not going to be doing that before too long. I don't, I don't even know. I, I don't know much about her, guys. I'm telling you, we get on the telephone, and it's like we've known each other forever since we was born, you know? And, and we're talking about everything except ourselves, really. <laughs> and it's, it's quite amazing. And in two hours, like five minutes time, I know it was not longer than five minutes. It just certainly couldn't have been. And it ain't, you know, 200 and some minutes. No, 150 some minutes, I think it was. Well, however long that, but that was... They ate them up. I had nine minutes left. It's like, no! And here I just promised her that I would do my best to call her every night. Yeah, it's pretty sly, boy, I tell you. you know, Luke, and you wouldn't believe the time I had trying to get minutes from track phone today, man. I mean, people, please, don't run out of minutes if you don't have another telephone to call in so they can put minutes on that phone because you're going to need that phone so they can do it. Okay, if you got a card or whatever, but uh, it was awful for me. I, I didn't get my minutes until just about 20 minutes before I was to call my bride so we could fly to heaven together. And it was just a nightmare, I'm telling you. Satan don't want me to talk to this woman. It's either that or Satan don't want her talking to me because she really builds me up. I've never never been built up like this before I've never had anyone tell me they love me and you know mean it like she does and I only knew what scriptural love was anyway in a righteous lust you know I mean righteous lust you know it's it's not for somebody else's wife it's not for somebody else's property it's not for somebody else's skills uh, this righteous lust is a lust that you have for things that belong to you you can lust after a chicken and that fried chicken. Ain't no big deal, you know, if you own the chicken. Don't be taking the neighbors now, okay? That's just not right. Not even if you share, unless you ask first. And then uh, it says, And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. They cried out for fear. But immediately Yahshua spoke to them, saying, Be of great cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Kepha answered him and said, Yahshua, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Kepha had gone down out of the boat, he walked in the water to go to Yahshua. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, the bills are coming in, oh, I got all these worries of life, and hey, the damn waves are moving, man, you know, I can't hardly stand up here, and, and then he started losing the faith, even though he asked Joshua to command him, and Joshua did, that was enough to get him out there. 
It was his faith afterwards that he, he discovered was lacking, and then he started to sink. But he didn't drown, see? Even though he started to sink, and, and though he was walking, it's kind of like, you know, what I was doing, all the old videos up until oh, a couple weeks ago, maybe. And uh, that's when I fell in love with my librarian. I didn't even know she was a librarian. I forgot to ask her what she was. Well, she had mentioned, you know, being a paramedic, I thought. But it could have been somebody else. I'm not going to tell. Oh, well. Here we are in the video, love. And it's going to be great. You're going to be one perfect jewel before our king. And you're going to be polished perfectly. And it says right there, you know, that he got out that boat. He's walking out on the water. The winds are boisterous. He was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Yahshua, save me! Sounds like all the churches out there, don't it? Oh, save me! But then they don't want to do nothing that they were told to do. He was told to come. And what's he doing? He's falling down on the job. He, he asked them to command them. He gets commanded. And then he just falls short, man. You know, he, he just didn't have the faith the further. Our king gave him that miracle for him to do that, but he didn't uphold it. He he, he let it down. But but see, the thing is, dear, all you got to do is hold the faith long enough, and our king will heal you. And then you can forget about it because you're going to be healed. <laughs> you know, you don't have to worry about standing and keep walking, okay? The way you would stand and keep walking is to stand in the laws and the commandments and keep walking. <laughs> Don't fall down. Don't let your faith pull any of this away from you. These are promises to you, my love, and it's coming. You're going to see. You're going to get it, and uh, you're going to be so joyous. You're going to be the first one really healed, and people are going to be listening to you because you're my 100,000 cow woman. Yeah, well, you're worth more than that, of course, but, you know, people can't even grasp, put their minds around that, let alone 50 shekels of silver that I'm supposed to get for someone else. So he said, come, and Kepha went down out the boat, and he walked in the water to go to Yahshua. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, I mean, that's pretty loud, man. And people are boisterous. It's kind of like me giving a sermon here, you know what I mean? It, it's just me and myself, but, boy, I tell you what, sometimes it raises hell in your, your timbers, don't it? Hearing the words that I speak, it's like, I believe it, but I ain't never done it. You know, well, repent, you know, I'll help you. I'll help you along the way, you know. I'm telling you, come out of the boat. Just walk. Walk. You can do it. I've done it. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, saying, Yahshua, save me. And immediately Yahshua stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? He was walking. He was on the water. He did it. <laughs> he, he was victorious. He's he's walking, doo -doo 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 -doo, out on the water, man. Everyone, oh, everyone in the boat's looking at him, walking out, and they're all saying, "Wow, look at Kefa, man. He's walking on the water." Yahshua said, "Come." He's walking on the water, man. Wow, ain't that cool? How come he didn't tell us to come to? Well, you didn't ask him to command you, okay? And that that's why Kefa's out there himself. And he's getting chastised. Oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? But see, he had to have little faith. He couldn't have great faith. <laughs> Think about it. you got to go through the schoolmaster to get to the father. So that when the father knows that you will honor him, then he's going to give you to his son. And then after you're given to the son... That's when the faith starts, and you're given to the Son, dear. You told me so, and I believe you. You said you was a gift sent from Yahshua before you knew what you were saying, and that's okay, because it was a message from my king through you. You're my vessel. You're my holy vessel, my holy temple, and through you I've got the waters of life just flowing. And they're refreshing. I mean, our king said, you know, that he was going to refresh us. He didn't say how. <laughs> well, I'm learning. 
you know, and, and I always keep my options open, but now, you know, it's like, it don't matter what takes place, I've got my bride, and she's got me. Oh, you little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those were who, in the, who were in the boat came and worshipped him. They listened to him. They obeyed him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of Yahweh. Because they seen little things like that, and that's nothing. <laughs> I mean, compared to our Father's strength and his might, now our king's. That's nothing. I mean, when they come up in uh, Armageddon, you know, and they encamp us around uh, Jerusalem there, here after the second resurrection, our king's going to go ah, and burn them all up. <laughs> yeah. So what's walking on water? Okay, that, you know, is basically parlor tricks. And, uh, you know, but what we're going to have go here, dear, you know, you're going to be right there at the throne of heaven. And you're going to be healed. There's no doubt in my mind. I don't know why you're going to doubt, you know. And I don't think you doubt. You just, you just have these feelings of unworthiness, and that's natural, you know. But you're you're part of me now, okay? All the beatings you took them with me. You certainly did, and you've got the marks that are going to go away, <laughs> and we're going to take care of that. So. Folks, uh, just consider these things. I mean, there's nothing impossible to our king. And in these last days, he's, you know, I'm nothing great. You won't find a donation, okay? You can't, you can't donate to me. In fact, this woman wanted to donate to me, and I talked her out of it and said, no, you can't do that. And, and what takes place? Well, she takes me. I should have took the donation. Someone saying, no. No, there, there wouldn't be no donation that uh, that could stack up to my lady. No, she's my pretty lady. She's my queen. And, uh, and you've got your prayer at the beginning of this, my love. And every video from now on, I pray that I will start out with a prayer, give a little bit of uh, uh, meat to see if people want to go through the torment of my prayer. Uh, whether they want to skip or not, but at least understand the subject matter before we begin. But uh, there's other things I want you to see too, dear. Okay, and and it doesn't. It does have a little bit here, but every healing, excuse me, every healing comes with a command. And I've got to command you. I mean, in this instance, it's. And you know, I've never commanded you in anything before, and I don't know if I'll command you ever again. Uh, but I do have to command you, and you're going to obey me, okay? The Holy Spirit in you, and your spirit, you want to submit to me as if I was the Messiah. Well, you're going to fall short, dear, if you don't get healed. So you need to just go ahead and yield yourself to our King. He sent me so I could go ahead and bless you and bless your holy temple, that I can be blessed too, you know? And darling, it's not me. It's you, but I've got to command you in this, and uh, you're going to be beautiful. I mean, you are, you know. I, like I said, I, I couldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to change you one little bit. There's nothing about you that I would want to change. Uh, like I told my ex for so many years, if I wanted the children to be like the babysitter, I'd marry the damn babysitter, you know. But and those children were always allowed with me. Otherwise, I wasn't there. Uh, I took my children everywhere. I loved my children. And, you know, I, I, I'm paying for it, you know. But I, I don't feel the pain anymore. It, it's not that at all. It's not an emptiness. It's a, it's a hope. <laughs> you know, it's, that's what it is. But I know that if I'm around my children or whatever, being as I am, and, and they like to disrespect me because that was what was taught and you know their house growing up but that's because it was an unbelieving marriage people you know and these kind of things your prayers can't even be answered but I knew tonight when I prayed with my bride that my prayers were answered I was right before the feet of our king and I didn't point it out to her because I was afraid she's gonna kiss him you know on the feet there you know and I didn't have my wet towel or nothing so but she's going to she's gonna she's gonna be there 
our king wants to heal her he gave her to me you know and dear you got to stop doubting it's not painful believe you me when you're going to feel a heat in, in it and I could, I could command you right now, and you'd most likely be healed just from my commanding you this way. But we want it orderly. Uh, we want it done in order. <laughs> and I want you to make sure that you're pure as you can be so that our king can do the rest of the cleansing on you. And he's going to heal you that day. All you got to do is just believe. And, I mean, if you open up the package to pull that out, you better believe that you need to pull that out. And if you got doubts, just don't take it out. Start the cleansing back over again, okay? And, and we'll just wait on everything. But you will be healed. If you obey me, you'll be healed. And I'm going to show you this next lesson, where there's, uh, which will be shorter, about this fellow that had leprosy. And he was told to go jump in the damn lake. <laughs> and, well, you know, we'll get into that story. Well, maybe not a lake, maybe a creek or a river or a Jordan or something. I don't know. We'll just have to let the scriptures show what the scriptures have to say. And I do appreciate y'all coming on in here. Uh, and you're, you're going to see this miracle. I'm not, I'm not whistling Dixie through my nose hairs on this one. I know. I've been healed before. I know it's a simple process. All you got to do is believe. And if I was healed back in 1990, I think it was, somewhere around there, of colon cancer, they gave me six and a half weeks yet to live, and I was healed, oh, baby, your, your faith is probably greater than mine right now, you know? I mean, I've been shipwrecked, but I'm still pretty strong, and you're the strongest woman I ever met. And I can't wait till we wrestle. Until then, I love you all, and I love you, my bride. And we'll get on with the next lesson and kind of combine these all together and listen to these. It, it will build your faith. It really will. Because you're loved. <laughs> you're loved more than you know. And you're stronger than you think you are. And you'll have the proof of that here pretty soon. You'll see it. It'll be shiny. And you'll say, wow. Oh, and by the way, folks, that Deuteronomy 28 video that I did. Now, this is how my, my bride is kind of like in sync with me. I'm making this video. She wakes up about the same time I'm making it. And what she do? She starts studying Deuteronomy 28. She's thousands of miles away. <laughs> Didn't call her at 6 o'clock in the morning. I was busy making the Deuteronomy 28 video. And she wrote, and she says, Wow, I got up, and this and that, and, and then I saw your video. It was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I was making it, and then had to, to put it up on there. I mean, as soon as I had sent her the, uh, the video, I think, is when she let me know that she was looking at Deuteronomy 28, and then boom, you know, there it was. But it's amazing. That's how our king is working. Uh, and she sees this. It's not coincidence. <laughs> it's not coincidence at all. Uh, and I'm sorry about these glasses, folks. I don't know quite what to do with them. My regular ones, these are kind of like uh, librarian glasses almost, you know. Maybe a, a guy librarian. My little lady's a librarian. Maybe we can get together and read some books. You know what I'm saying? anyway, I forgot what I was just going to say there before I went off on the librarian trick about my glasses. Oh, yeah. Uh, what occurred is I had my glasses in my pocket, went mowed the lawn, uh, and went to pull the lawnmower back in where it's supposed to go, and it just stopped moving six feet before the spot it was supposed to be at. After the whole lawn is mowed, it just don't move. And I turned it off and waited for a while. I turned it on. And it's like, oh, man, something's going on here. Don't understand. But I got that funny feeling. And I discovered my glasses was gone. So I probably mowed over them. And, and man, those are some nice glasses, too. I, I paid a dollar for them over a Dollar Tree. Dollar eight, I think, you know. But uh, they sure served me well, man. And it really stinks losing those glasses. But... These videos must go on. Your wish, my queen, is my command. Shalom to y'all. 
Shalom to you, bride. I love you, my wife. Sleep well. You're going to be healed soon. You're going to see. And you're going to rejoice.